Scott. Thank you, Ken. It's a pleasure to uh, report the long-term follow-up of this study. This is an enormous study with over 200 centers involved uh, across about 18 different countries. Um, so um, basically, the disclosures are given here. The only thing that's really relevant is the study was partially funded by AstraZeneca, who make an Astrazole, uh, but they had no involvement in the management running or decision to publish this data. So we, we published about six years ago the initial results of an Astrazole uh, in prevention, and the aim of this study is a particular focus on what happens in the longer term. That original publication was um, a five-year five follow-up, median follow-up, and now we're up to almost 11-year median follow-up. So substantial addition, di, uh, information about the long-term data. Particularly relevant because tamoxifen has been looked at in prevention and been shown that the 30 percent reduction you get with tamoxifen for five years is maintained for at least 20 years. So that's a crucial question for the aromatase inhibitors. So the study design was just under 4,000 patients uh, or women, 38, uh, 64, randomized one-to-one -to, -one to either an astrazole, one milligram daily, or matching placebo. The first five years, they were followed up in clinic while they were given treatment. Uh, and then the subsequent follow-up was a bit of a mixture depending on the country, clinic visits, uh, questionnaires to the patients, and in some cases, we were able to supplement that with registry data. So the median follow-up now is, is 10 point um, nine uh, years on that particular data. So the results are here. Previously, we only had half the patients out to five years. This is the full, complete data for everyone out to five-year follow-up. Um, and there was a 60 percent reduction, a 61 percent reduction in new breast cancers over that five-year period, going from 4.6 percent down to 1.8 percent. And the number needed to treat to prevent one breast cancer in that first five years is 36, which is pretty good. So the new data basically looks more at the long-term follow-up. The effect size was not quite so big, although significant, it was not significantly lower. It was a 36% reduction in new cancers in years 5 to 12, going from 4.4% down to 3.5%. Statistically significant in its own right, and although numerically less than in the, in the active treatment period, not significantly so. Um, and so if you put that all together, you end up with a substantial benefit over 12 years uh, of 49 percent. Almost half the breast cancers were prevented, um, reducing that from 8.8 percent .8 down to 5.3 percent. And the number needed to treat uh, with that 12-year follow-up now drops to 29, which is substantially bigger than what was seen with tamoxifen at that stage where you needed 49 patients to prevent one, one breast cancer. So five years of treatment, remember treatment stops at five years, carries on producing continuing benefits right out to 12 years and follow-up will continue. A little bit of subgroups, um, if you looked at the effect uh, first five years versus after five years, there was, as I pointed out, a bigger effect in the first five years but still a significant effect subsequently. Uh, the effect was stronger, as we expected, in estrogen receptor positive cancers, but we found a somewhat surprising, although non-significant effect, of even a reduction in estrogen receptor negative uh, cancers, which was actually apparent in both treatment periods, although not significant. So this is going to require further follow-up to see whether there is potentially some effect in cancers which arise as ER negative cancers. Uh, a big effect in DCIS, the essentially precursor lesion to, pre to, to cancer, uh, a 61, a 60%, 59% reduction overall, um, and it was uh, apparent particularly in the first five years, but continued to show up uh, after that period. Uh, so a substantial reduction in these early lesions. And although we didn't have uh, estrogen receptor assays on all of the DCISs, that's not routine. In the ones for which we did, we found a really dramatic almost 80 percent reduction uh, in new cancers, uh, and that was equally seen both in the first five years and subsequently. Adverse events were um, really reassuring. There was um, really no nothing serious. Uh, the mortality data uh, is still too early. It's uh, 69 deaths in the anastrozole versus 70 in the placebo, and only two versus three, one less death in anastrozole, but way too early. 
So we need another 10 years of follow-up to actually sort out how these dramatic reductions in incidence are going to convert into mortality or not. In terms of other cancers, we had expected a reduction in endometrial cancer, which we didn't see because it was so estrogen dependent. Numbers are small, but we found a dramatic reduction in skin cancers, mostly non-melanoma skin cancer, for which we don't have an understanding, but a 40 percent highly significant result in, in uh, a reduction of, of, of those cancers as well. Um, so f um, the other issue is we did look at a, a, a treatment adherence. Every patient had had their full five years, offered full five year, years of treatment. and. Uh, the differences were very, very small. So 77 percent of the placebo arm uh, continued to take treatments for a full five years, and it reduced to 74.6 percent uh, in anastrozole, so just about two and a half percent higher dropout rate. And I think that's what you can attribute to the side effects. We did report in the first result in the five-year period, there were a lot of reported side effects, particularly musculoskeletal events. It was 64 percent in the treatment arm, but 58 percent in placebo. And I think one of the real challenges is that most of these effects that are actually being reported are not treatment related. There's a very, very high rate of, of musculoskeletal arthralgias even in placebo arm, indicating that we have to be very careful to interpret this. And in fact, the loss uh, of, of continued treatment for the four, five years is really very, very small, just this two and a half percent. So. Um, uh, I think that's an important issue. No serious late uh, events as well that we've seen. And um, I, I guess uh, uh, also no increase in fractures. The fracture rate was known to be high with estrogen depletion in the, uh, in the treatment trials. We required a baseline DEXA scan in all the patients, and uh, they had to take a bisphosphonate if they are osteoporotic, and it was recommended at the osteopenic. No increase in fractures, just a tiny 4 percent, nowhere near significant increase. So that problem seems to be manageable. So just in conclusion, uh, anastrozole significantly reduces breast cancer by 49 percent with a 12-year follow-up. It's particularly clear in the ER positive, but some effect in ER negative, which we still don't understand. Um, and the uh, important new data is the substantial 36 percent reduction seen in the post-treatment period, which is still larger than seen for tamoxifen, which is about a 30 percent reduction year on year, but it goes out to 20 years. We see a much bigger effect uh, in the first five years and a continuing effect which is larger in the post-treatment period. So that's, I think, good news as well. The number needed to treat is only 29 now. That's after, after 12 years of follow-up, which is a very uh, respective number respectable number, bigger than what was seen for, or lower than was seen for tamoxifen, a bigger effect there. No increase in fractures. Again, baseline DEXA scans, I think, were important to identify women who were osteoporotic initially and make sure they got treated. They could still take anastrozole, but they needed a bisphosphonate as well to protect against fractures. There were really no major uh, adverse events uh, seen between the treatments. The other cancer effect was, was very, very similar aside from this reduction in non-melanoma skin cancers, no increase in cardiovascular events, as I said, no increase in fractures, and we could find really no serious side effects. And of course, the ones that occur in the first five years are things like musculoskeletal pains. We didn't actually, we weren't able to follow that up properly in the, in the, in the follow-up period, but most of those occurred within about a year or two. So we don't expect that we've really missed uh, anything serious there. And um, the mortality data is still, is still immature. There's no effect on breast cancer or other deaths, but it's, it's way too early to make any judgment about that. I think this highlights the real important need, particularly in prevention studies, to do long-term follow-up. We've learned a lot going out to 12 years. Another 10 years of follow-up will tell us a lot more about the impact on mortality. So in conclusion, I think these data provide further support for the use of anastrozole in breast cancer prevention in high-risk women. It's been recommended by NICE in the United Kingdom, National Institute for Clinical Excellence, and the U.S. Preventive Task Force in the United States, but it's not licensed for treatment because uh, the, the drug's off patent and nobody wants to pay those extreme fees, but it is being used, although not as much as we'd hoped. So thank you very much.